Hello learners, I am Manorama from Jawaharlal Nehru University. I welcome all of you to this LIS program of NIOS. Learners, last time we talked about information retrieval system, its basics, its concept and scope. Today I am going to focus on various tools which we use in an information retrieval system. So today this presentation will cover various information retrieval tools like catalogs, indexes and list of subject headings. It will discuss concept of subject cataloging. It will illustrate types of control indexing languages like list of subject headings and thesaurus. Learners, in fact, information retrieval is the activity of locating or obtaining or getting relevant information from a collection of information resources. Library is an information retrieval system in which we prepare and use different tools and techniques and software to describe or represent the contents of the documents. These tools and techniques also help in retrieving the required information in libraries. Learners, what do we do in libraries? In libraries, we acquire documents, then we analyze the contents of the documents. We use notation or code to represent the contents of the documents. For example, we use different kinds of classification schemes to represent the contents of the documents. We create a file or database of notation or codes of contents of the documents. We organize and maintain the collection according to the notation or code. That means we use a certain scheme of classification for representing or for translating the contents of documents into a notation or code. Then we create an interface which connects the user to the collection of documents. And what happens learners? This very interface helps the users to browse and know the contents of books and collections. We use classification codes, prepare catalogs, indexes and all these are tools of information retrieval. In order to organize knowledge, librarians and information professionals have to create a variety of tools. They have to use a variety of tools. Traditionally, the tools of information retrieval have been catalogs, bibliographies and printed indexes. Presently, with the arrival, with the advent of information technologies, we have online databases and they, these online databases have indexes which help the users, which help the learners in retrieving the required information. So learners, first we will be talking of catalogs which is also one of the tools for information retrieval. As you know learners, catalogs are windows to the library collection which means they help, they provide a glimpse of the collections, they provide a glimpse of the books, magazines, periodicals which are held by the library, which means it provides a listing of the documents of books in magazines or periodicals which are available in the library collection. A catalog is the record of the collection in the library. It is also a systematic arrangement of items in an alphabetical or other logical order including brief description. A library catalog is a list of books and other reading material available in the collection. As you can see on the screen, an example or a sample of a card catalog, it provides different details, it provides bibliographical details of a particular book. As you can see, there is a call number, call number as you know it comprises class number and book number. Class number represents the contents of the document. Then you can see the card number also provides information with regard to author of the document. There is title, subtitle in it. It provides other information like place from where the book has been published. Then it has publisher, date of publication and so on and so forth. So you can see this is a card catalog, it is a card catalog, it also provides, it 
provides information with regard to the document. So, it helps in retrieving the document. Now, let us see different types of catalogs. Learners, as you know, there is an author catalog. Author catalogs contain entries with authors' names as the heading. Authors may be persons or corporate bodies, and the term author is normally extended to include writers, illustrators, performers, producers, and translators, and so on and so forth. Then we have title catalog learners. Title catalog has entries with title as the heading. Some libraries and information centers make title entries for all items being indexed, but in other situations, title entries are made selectively for some collections. Then we also have author title catalogs. Author title catalogs contain both title and author entries. As both titles and authors names are in an alphabetical order, it is easy to file together author names and titles as headings. Then we also have subject catalogs. Subject catalogs have an indication of the subject of the document being indexed as their headings. The entries are arranged in an appropriate systematic order. There are two significant different types of subject catalogs. We have alphabetical subject catalogs which have headings which are these headings are words or index terms designed to summarize the subject content of the document. For example, car lawyers, these entries are arranged alphabetically according to subject headings. Then we also have as you know classified subject catalogs. They have headings on entries which are classification symbols. For example, if a book is on library science, it will have 016 as its code and you know this code which represents the content of the book or the document has been taken from some classification scheme. In this example, the scheme is DV decimal classification. In a classification scheme, what happens learners as you know, each subject is assigned a notation or a piece of notation and the notation represents the content or the subject matter of the book. The headings will be arranged according to the filing sequence of the notation. In classified catalog, learners, in fact, it is a catalog with three or four separate sequences. It may be an author title catalog or index or separate author and title catalog, a classified subject catalog and a subject index to the classified catalog. That means all the books, all the documents, on a particular subject or on, on a subject which is being represented by a common notation, they are put together. We also have dictionary catalog. Learners, dictionary catalog is a catalog with only one sequence which may be author, title. In this catalog, all the subject entries or title entries are arranged in an alphabetical sequence. As all the headings are, alphabet, are in an alphabetical order, it is possible to file together entries regardless of the nature of their heading. So, you can see learners that in dictionary catalog, things are arranged or entries are arranged in an alphabetical manner as it happens in a dictionary. So, in manual system, we have these in different kinds of indexes which are tools which help in retrieving required information or in retrieving required documents. But in the automated system, we have OPAC, which, is, which stands for Online Public Access Catalog. As you can see on the screen, it is OPAC of National Institute of Open Schooling Library. And this, in fact, this is also a kind of tool which acts as an interface between the users and the collections available in the library. So, if one browses through this OPAC, if one access this OPAC, one can easily find out about the different documents available in NIOS library. Now, after catalogs, 
we will talk about indexes. Index, an index is also a kind of tool of information retrieval system. That means index is also a tool which helps users or students in retrieving the required information. An index, in fact, it is essentially a filter or pointer or indicator or you can say it is a systematic guide to the items contained in the book or in the document. It is an alphabetical list of references, usually at the end of a book. Its purpose is to let through wanted documents and to hold back unwanted ones. Now we will talk about subject indexing. Subject indexing, in fact, is a classification process. On the basis of the subject matter of the documents, we do group together books which have similar content or similar subject matter. And the books which deal with different subject matter or are unlike not similar, they are separated from the documents which deal with the same kind of contents. We label these classes of related documents in order to maintain the established groups and to refer to them. In other words, we name the classes and the names we give to them are our index terms. As this, it indicates, we name the classes. All the books dealing with, uh, say, uh, on the topic of classification will be given this classification and this name classification becomes an index term. And indexes, they have tremendous importance. They minimize the time and effort and they help in locating or finding the information. They maximize the searches. That means a user can index, can access an index and get the maximum out of his search which he conducts. It adds value to the document. It enhances or increases the use of documents by the users. Now we will talk about subject headings. In a traditional library, when a control vocabulary is set up in the form of an alphabetical listing of index terms, the individual terms are known as subject headings and the control vocabulary as a list of subject headings. Subject headings lists are useful to understand the relationship among concepts to a certain degree besides their application in indexing. Subject heading lists are highly valuable for indexing. Subject headings are given in the catalog entries to provide subject access to information. Catalogers depend on the list of subject headings from which they can assign subject headings to the catalog documents. That means there are documents available, there are standard subject headings available which the catalogers use to assign headings to the documents which they catalog. The conceptual relationships are indicated in the list and the choice of terms and preferences are given. And recently, these lists have also introduced many features of thesaurus. We have two examples very commonly known. First one is Library of Congress subject headings. The second example is Sears list of subject headings. It's a short version and it is usually used by libraries which have a small collection. Subject cataloging deals with what a book or other library item is about. The purpose of subject cataloging is to list under one uniform word or phrase all the material on a given topic that a library has. Now the advantages of subject cataloging. It enables users seeking information to identify and provide access to all documents on a subject. It also brings together all the related material on a subject at one place thus making things easier for the users to access. Subject cataloging also enables access of material if the users are using various kinds of vocabulary, for example, synonyms. Besides this, user can also retrieve the latest information as all related information on subject is at one place. Learners, as we know, when we classify, we use a scheme of classification and which is also a controlled vocabulary. We assign class labels to a document 
to represent a subject matter. For convenience, however, we use class number in place of natural language terms. The process is thus is known as classification, whereas the assignment of subject heading is generally referred to subject indexing or subject cataloging. So learners, as you understand, when we classify a book or a document, we assign a code or notation from some scheme of classification. So instead of natural language term, we assign a notation or code. This is classification. But whereas the assignment of subject headings, when we assign some standard heading or some commonly used heading, then it is known as subject indexing or subject cataloging. That means the difference is in classification, we are assigning a notation or a code, whereas in subject indexing or subject cataloging, we are using natural language terms. So this slide, I think, clears the difference. Indexing language is the language used to describe a subject or other aspects of information in a library catalog or an index. Indexing language, in fact, is described as a list of terms or notations that might be used as access points in an index. Uh, learners, as you know, indexing language is the language used to describe a subject or other aspects of information in a library catalog or an index. It is defined, this language, this indexing language is defined as a list of terms that might be used as access points in an index. An indexing language may also be referred to as a retrieval language as it helps the users in retrieving the required document or information. Now learners, let's talk about different types of indexing languages. We have controlled indexing language. Only approved terms can be used by the indexer to describe the document. Control means as the very term indicates that you can only use certain approved terms. So in the use of controlled indexing language, only approved terms can be used by the indexer to describe the subject matter or the document. Then we have natural language indexing language. Any term from the document in question can be used to describe the document. Then we have free indexing language. Any term not only from the document, but from outside the document can also be used to describe the document. Control, as you know, learners, is necessary in respect of terms used as a subject identifiers in a catalog or index because of the variety of natural languages. Such control may involve excluding certain terms from use as headings or access points in a library catalog or in an index. The terms which are to be used are specified and synonyms are recognized. The list of terms thus prepared constitutes and is called controlled indexing language. Controlled indexing languages are indexing languages in which both the terms which are used to represent subjects and the process whereby terms are assigned to a particular document are controlled or executed by a person. Normally, there is a list of terms which acts as an authority file or as an authority list in identifying the terms that may be assigned to documents. It means, or in some simple terms, there is a list of terms, there is a list of concepts, and from that list of concepts or terms, indexer or cataloger has to assign to different documents. There are two types of controlled indexing languages, namely alphabetical indexing language and classification schemes. In alphabetical indexing languages, terms are embodied in thesauri and subject heading lists. The subject terms are alphabetical names of the subject. Control is exercised over terms which are used. Otherwise, the terms are ordinary words. In classification schemes, each subject is assigned a piece of notation. So the usual objective of assigning, why do we assign a notation to a book? Learners, as you know, the usual objective of assigning notation is to place a subject within a context with respect to other subjects. 
Both types of devices can be applied in catalogs, indexes to books and periodicals, bibliographies, current awareness bulletins, selective dissemination of information and so on. Classification is also prominent in the physical arrangement of documents. There are different examples of controlled indexing languages, list of subject headings, classification schemes and so on. So as the one of the earlier slides also explained, the purpose of su subject headings is to give the cataloger a way to describe the content of material in the library and a way to describe the content means one has to, a cataloger has to use one of the terms from the controlled vocabulary to describe the contents of the book. Library of subject headings comprises a thesaurus of subject headings maintained by United States Library of Congress for use in bibliographic records. This is also known as LCSH. It is applied to every item within the library's collection and it facilitates access to items in the catalog which pertains to similar subject matter. Library of Congress list of subject headings. In this, the concepts are uh, listed in alphabetical manner and they, the concepts show different types of relationship among themselves. First one is equivalence relationship. When two concepts indicate same kind of content or same kind of value, for example, a user may use a word like aged people, another user you may use a word like elderly people. This shows these two words are listed in the subject headings, but it shows which is the preferred term. If the preferred term is elderly people, then a cataloger has to use this word. This LCHS also shows hierarchical relationships. Hierarchical relationships means for example, you may have universe, under that you have different continents, under that you have different countries and under different countries you have different states and under that you have different cities. So there is a hierarchy which you can see. Then there is associative relationship between the words. Associative means they are similar in nature. For example, you may have libraries, under libraries, you may have college libraries and then you may have university libraries. So uh, college libraries and university libraries, they are not exactly the same, but there is an association. There is an element of similarity between these two concepts. So this is an example of associative relationship. Then you may have general and specific references, for example, you may be referring to one word which may be listed over there, say university libraries, then enter that or un under the heading of university libraries, you may find, see also research libraries. So this is how, what is meant by general and specific references. This is the screenshot shows Library of Congress list of subject headings. Then another one is Sears list of subject headings. It is usually used by small libraries which have less number of books in their collections. It also shows different kinds of relationships like narrower topics, broader topics, related topics and used for as we saw earlier in one of the earlier slides like associated relationships or specific or general references. Narrower topic for example, you may have libraries, under libraries you may have academic libraries, under academic libraries you will have school libraries. So this is what is meant by a narrower topic. Then broader topic refers to more general subject headings. These subject headings would be useful if you need to broaden your topic. Then related topics, these terms can provide ideas or other topics to investigate used for, there may be certain terms which are commonly used. For example, there may be an entry uh, like uh, elderly people or aged people. So if a term is uh, given UF, that means used elderly people is used for uh, aged people and so on and so forth. This is the screenshot of Sears list of subject headings, 21st edition has all, uh, already come out. Now learners, Let's talk about thesaurus. 
The dictionary meaning of the word thesaurus is a collection of words put in groups together according to likeness in their meaning order rather than alphabetical list. However, in library information science parlance, the word thesaurus means an authoritative list showing terms which may or may not be used in a catalog or index to describe concepts of documents. Thesaurus is defined as a compilation of words and phrases showing synonyms, hierarchical and other relationships and dependencies, the function of which is to provide a standard vocabulary for information storage and retrieval system. Thesaurus, it means as the slide shows, it is a compilation of words and it shows relationship among the words, whether the words are related or whether they have some hierarchy or whether they are synonymous in nature, all these things are mentioned in a thesaurus. Information retrieval thesaurus, thesauri is plural of word thesaurus, are based on three types of relationship among concepts, equivalence, hierarchical and associative relationships and they are displayed in an alphabetical sequence. We have already talked about these relationships. This is Oxford learners thesaurus which I think learners must have used. Then we have different types of indexes, book index, author index, title index and subject index. Learners you must have seen this kind of index at the end of the book. In fact, the index which is at the end of the book does not include all the book, all the terms which are there in the book. It only talks, it only lists important keywords which have been covered in the book. It does not cover stop words like of, in, and the. It contains, it lists keywords. Keywords are important concepts which have been covered in the book. Now let me summarize what I have focused upon today. I have talked about various information and retrieval tools like catalogs, indexes, subject headings, and thesaurus. These are different tools which are used in information retrieval system and these tools help in retrieving the required exact information. Thank you, thank you very much.